Hey, uh, hi, Ali. Hi, everyone. Thank you um, for the opportunity to present my work here today. So uh, this work is um, a collaboration with um, Eric Lutz and uh, Kaunami Kade, both from Stuttgart. So the take home message that I want to express here is that thermodynamics deals with processes, not states. And so whenever there is uh, quantum systems involved, that there can be invasiveness due to measurement. And this means that the process becomes extrinsic. It doesn't depend only on the system itself, but it depends on how you measure the system. Uh, uh, and the formalism we're going to introduce to tackle this, this problem, which I think is, a, is a, um, a meaningful problem in our field, is what we call the quantum Bayesian networks. And it, um, these are the uh, three main papers that I'm going to talk about. Okay, so the problem is how do we characterize heat and work uh, in systems that have quantum coherences? So uh, here is a, a simple example. Suppose you have two qubits, which are in thermal states, so, so no coherences and they interact with the simplest possible kind of unitary, like a partial swap. Uh, uh, now this kind of uh, partial swap has nice thermal properties, which means that if one qubit is, is hot, the other one's cold and they interact, they end up becoming uh, warm and warm. So, so there's a, a natural flow of heat. Uh, and this is shown here, this is the energy of the hot qubit and it goes down. So, so heat is flowing from hot to cold. And this obeys a, a second law uh, um, uh, which is actually um, um, ensured by this uh, strict energy conservation, which appears in, in resource theories a lot, uh, that ensures that you know, everything is well behaved and we get this correct um, uh, thermal intuition from this kind of uh, process. Uh, okay, so how do we measure heat? Well, the standard way would be a, a two-point measurement. We have two qubits, A and B, uh, with eigenthings here, energies and states. Uh, and then we measure them, evolve, and measure them. So uh, we first measure them in the energy basis. We get some probabilities, which are the thermal probabilities. We evolve them with the unitary of the process that we want. And then we measure again and, and get some kind of transition matrix uh, from AB to A prime B prime. Uh, and at the stochastic level, uh, heat is then defined as the energy difference between the, the, the system A or B. So either the final energy of B minus the initial one or the same thing with the opposite sign for A. And then putting all of this together, we can now construct a heat distribution, which is the probability that some heat flows uh, during this process determined by this unitary U. Okay, uh, but now let's consider what happens when there are uh, quantum coherences present. And in particular, I'm going to consider the scenario in this paper, uh, which considers global coherences in the joint states of uh, the two qubits. So uh, the states um, is taken to be a product of thermal states at different temperatures, plus uh, a coherence term, which is essentially this red um, uh, parameter alpha here in the joint density matrix. Uh, and what was fun about this, this kind of uh, state is, uh, as discussed in these two papers over here, is that you can now have a reversal of heat flow. So because of these global correlations, you can actually have heat flowing from cold to hot uh, at, at the expense of consuming these correlations. And this is actually determined by this uh, modified second law, which says that uh, uh, the sign of uh, delta beta Q is actually determined by the sign is actually bounded, sorry, by the sign of the change of mutual information. So, so if you consume mutual information, uh, if this quantity here is negative, if, if you, if you uh, end up with less mutual information than you had before, then you can actually, um, uh, it, it's possible to make heat flow from cold to hot. And this is shown here uh, in the experiment. Uh, so this is um, uh, energy and this is mutual information. Uh, the uncorrelated case that we had before uh, you have uh, uh, heat flowing from, from hot to cold. So this guy and the mutual information is just here, uh, tiny. But it, uh, when there's initial correlations, heat flows in the opposite direction. It now, it now flows from hot to cold. Uh, sorry, from cold to hot, apologies. Yeah, in the opposite direction. And you're actually consuming uh, mutual information. Okay, but how do we measure Q? I mean, what, what is actually the, the heat Q in that experiment? Well, um, in that case, we actually determined the heat that, that refers to the average heat. And we determined that using full tomography. So we actually had full tomography of the joint density matrix of the two qubits. And from that, we constructed the average heat uh, by just taking the energy difference, for instance, of qubit P at different times. 
but suppose we want to actually measure the heat. You know, we want to go like there with some kind of probe that is some calorimeter or something, and we want to measure heat. Uh, how do we do that? Well, if we try to do the TPM, uh, we're screwed because the TPM, as soon as we do the first measurement, is going to destroy these coherences. So um, the first of the two uh, measurements in the TPM actually takes this quantum state and uh, returns just the product of two thermal states, right? So, so we, we get back to just row A thermal uh, tensor row B thermal, and you know um, um, the coherences didn't, didn't serve for anything. So if we do the TPM, what we get for the heat distribution is actually the same thing we had before. It's exactly the same one as if these alpha were not present at all. So if we want to actually measure the heat, which is, is a meaningful uh, you know, thing we, we would like to do, then we, we run into trouble because we destroy these coherences. And so for instance, if we do the TPM and we measure the average heat, then we're not going to get the, the same one that we, we had here. J just by average, averaging, since we destroy these coherences, we're going to get something else. And the difference is actually in, in this term, which uh, you see uh, what enters here is the original density matrix. And what enters here is this diagonal density matrix. Uh, so, so this is what I mean by the process being extrinsic. The very act of trying to determine the heat, we actually influenced it in an irreversible and uh, uh, um, way. Uh, and therefore, the, the value of the heat that we obtain is different as if we didn't uh, um, measure it. So this is a fundamental issue. Uh, uh, and I think it's a very interesting issue. It, it, it is an interplay between uh, measurement uh, back action in quantum physics and the fact that thermodynamics always deals with processes. So, you know, uh, quantities in thermodynamics depend on at least two uh, 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 measurements or two, two instants of time. Uh, and then the measurements are invasive. So, so that's what I mean by extrinsic. Uh, there are several alternatives for this. Uh, um, uh, there's a kind of older one called uh, operator of the operator of work or operator of heat. Actually, in this case, it would be more precise to call this heat, <laughs> but it's the same idea. Uh, there are uh, the idea of quasi probabilities, which are probabilities that can take on negative values, and they are interesting in, them, in themselves because they are associated to contextuality. And what uh, I'm going to talk about here is that this new proposal which we come up with, which is called Bayesian quantum Bayesian networks. So this was put forth in this paper, and I'm going to show not only this, but also the experimental validation of this, which is on archive and appeared December last year. Okay, so here's the scenario we take. We consider the system as a blob. Uh, it's a blob we don't have, we don't try to access. Um, and this blob uh, is in an initial state, which is um, uh, a mixture of states, pure states S with some probabilities PS. And uh, this evolves unitarily. So the unitary evolution, we can um, uh, see here that each state S is actually evolving unitarily. So that the, when I mean system here, I mean the global universe, right? And so uh, each eigenstate S is just rotating in the big Hubert space. Uh, and the final state is just, again, the same probabilities PS, which don't change in time, times this uh, rotated big state. Uh, and in the language of Markov chains, we would call this a hidden layer. But then we want to associate to these states some probabilities of finding the system in different, uh, uh, um, some quantum state x0, x1, x2, and so on. So we define conditional probabilities, which are the conditional probabilities that the system is found in some state x of t, given that at time t, it was in the state ua, uts, right? And these are arbitrary quantum states. And so from this, we can actually construct a distribution uh, from a, for a path, so a path of going from x0 to x1 to x2 and so on, uh, which is just given by a sum over the initial uh, probabilities times these, these transition probabilities. So the, the probability that it's an x0 at time 0, x1 at time 1, x2 at time 2, and so on. Right. So we just build this object. And I'll explain, of course, uh, in a second why it makes sense to build this object. But what is interesting to note is that, first of all, uh, this always yields a valid distribution. I mean, as far as probability theory is concerned, this is a genuine probability distribution. And it has no back action, because I'm not assuming that I'm measuring and collapsing the system. I'm just like pulling down these strings and asking these questions. Well, if the system is here, what is the probability of finding it here, and so on. So, so there is no back action by the way we construct. Uh, and even though this may sound a little bit strange at first, uh, because we're kind of building this object by hand, uh, I'll show uh, recently that you can actually 
uh, obtain this as the outcomes of an experiment if you have multiple copies. This will be the, the last part of my talk. So uh, the choice of path is, is quite general. Um, uh, and so if we can now return to, to the uh, uh, case of uh, qubit and heat transport in the, in the heat exchange in the qubit system, um, uh, we can actually assume that the global system is in, is in some pure state and then the local states, what, what I was calling X, are actually these local ba energy bases AIBI. And so this is going to give a, a probability distribution of AB, A prime, B prime for two points, which is given by this quantity. And uh, we can compare this with the TPM. So in the TPM, the only difference is that it's here and here. Uh, you see, in the TPM, we measure uh, and then it collapses. So, so when the system evolves, it's actually in the state AB. And here we're not. Uh, measuring, so it's in the state S. Uh, and this yields the correct average. So, so uh, um, the, the average that we would expect uh, 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 without, without any disturbance is recovered by this TPM. Uh, and here I just showed uh, experimental data of the probability distribution. So we can now uh, write down the, the full probability distribution P of Q. Uh, and this just compares the uh, uncorrelated with the correlated case. So we can actually uh, not only talk about the average heat, but we can now talk about a full distribution of heat within this scenario. Um, another interesting thing about these Bayesian networks is that they satisfy as fluctuation theorems. Uh, so the, the, uh, the, there's a generalization of the fluctuation theorem, uh, uh, which involves heat and a bunch of information theoretic quantities. So it involves uh, these I's, which are stochastic mutual informations uh, in the uh, beginning and the end. So zero is the beginning and one is the end. It involves these sigmas, which are associated to the disturbance in the, in the relative entropy. And it involves this gamma, which is a dynamical factor associated to the unitary. And not only there's a global fluctuation theorem for these quantities, but there are also local uh, individual fluctuation theorems for these quantities. And uh, it's nice that we can split these informational uh, stochastic informations into a classical correlation and a quantum correlation in the sense of discord. And these two satisfy individual fluctuation theorems. So not only have fluctuation theorems for the total mutual information, but for the individual quantum and classical components. And this is the experimental result. Uh, so these are uh, all the, 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 the tons of quantities here and uh, uh, the average of E minus that thing. And you see that's always around one here. Okay, um, and finally, how do we uh, actually obtain a Bayesian network? Um, well, we recently showed that you can actually do this if you have access to multiple identical copies of a quantum system. Uh, so if we have only a, a single system, it's impossible to construct this kind of probability distribution uh, because of course you will always have back action. So there is no way of obtaining such a distribution from. Uh, the outcomes of an experiment on a single system. But if we have identical copies, we can. And I'm going to illustrate this with this case, which is a two-point quantum Bayesian network. And if, if it's two-point, then you need two copies. So two identical copies of the system. And here's the recipe. Uh, so first we measure the copies uh, in, in the eigenstates of the, of the density matrix. So in the eigenstates of rho. And then we post-select. This is the crucial step. So we do a post-selection. We throw away all those experimental outcomes where uh, uh, we obtain different results for these two states. And then on these post-selected states, we measure the first copy in a state X0, and we, we then evolve the second copy and measure in X1. So the first copy, we just measure. The second one, we evolve and then measure. And the outcomes, uh, the, which is equivalent to applying this POVM. So we apply a POVM projective measurement X0 in the first one and UX1 in the second one. And so this will yield exactly this uh, quantum Bayesian network. So uh, the trick here is really post-selection. By post-selecting the outcomes we, uh, on two copies, we can actually obtain this Bayesian network. Uh, and this is interesting because it connects uh, nicely with this uh, famous paper on the no-go theorem about uh, uh, work determination. So uh, uh, the idea of this no-go is uh, to pose the following question. Can we construct some kind of POVM J of W which is such that um, um, the probability distribution of work gives uh, the correct average. So it, it yields a, a genuine probability that uh, gives the unperturbed average, so without perturbations. And it reduces to the TPM case whenever the system is incoherent. So if there are no coherences, we want to recover TPM. But when there are coherences, we want to obtain something which is still a valid distribution and still gives the unperturbed correct average. Uh, so, so the no-go essentially says that this is impossible. Uh, 
Uh, but this is a, assumes a single copy of the system. If we have access to multiple copies, we can actually do this. So uh, uh, this is an ugly POVM, uh, JFW, that we can uh, um, uh, construct and which satisfies exactly these two properties. Uh, there is a caveat, however. Uh, so um, uh, we have this, this uh, table here, which is a, an adaptation from the table in this paper, which uh, shows that the Bayesian networks are measurable, satisfy fluctuation theorems, are, uh, um, and are avail available for coherent processes. But there is a caveat, I'm not going to lie, uh, which is that um, uh, the question of in what may this uh, POVM depend on. So if this POVM can depend on the initial state of the system, uh, uh, then, then this is not true. But if, if we allow it to depend on the state of the system, then this is true. And our POVM does depend on the state of the system. Interestingly, it only depends on the eigenstates, not the eigenvalues. So I think that's already a kind of an upgrade because in general, you would have to construct some POVM which depends on the entire state. Okay, so uh, the conclusions and outlook, uh, we introduced this notion of quantum Bayesian networks, which are relevant for thermodynamics of coherent systems. That's the take home message because it avoids the back action from the TPM measurement. Uh, now this Bayesian network, it satisfies nice physical properties in particular fluctuation theorems. So we believe that these are meaningful and interesting objects to study. Uh, and they have their value because of these kinds of things. Um, uh, and I also showed how they can obtain, be obtained from multiple copies of the systems of the system. Uh, and in terms of uh, future perspectives, we're looking now at the implementation of Bayesian networks for heat engines, quantum transport, and so on. And I, we're also thinking a little bit about metrology, maybe thermometry, and so on. So, so that's it. Thank you very much, uh, and I'm open.